The now we're joined by Congressman Greg Walden, a Republican from Oregon. Uh, Congressman, so the speaker is saying that by tomorrow this vote is going to be across the finish line. Are you optimistic that there's going to be little to no opposition on this piece of legislation? Look, I think everybody understands the seriousness of this situation, the need to get this help out to people who are filing for unemployment, businesses that are suffering, um, our communities that need help, our first responders that need the, the PPE. Um, we've got to get more vaccines out there. We've got to invest in new testing and new cures. And so all that's wrapped up into this package. And so, yes, I, I think you'll see an overwhelming um, voice vote for this. Certainly, we're all a little troubled when, when you're talking trillions uh, to be spent. Um, that's that, you know, you've broken the bank on your on your grandkids' uh, piggy bank. But this has to happen. We have to get this done. Uh, we've never faced a, a contagion like this in the United States or across the globe. So I, I think you'll see uh, this pass and pass overwhelmingly, and we'll begin to, to take a look at what needs to be done going forward. Uh, but this is a huge stimulus, um, but it's also a huge bridge, and it's also a big safety net. It's all three in one. Congressman, you're the top Republican on the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, what is in this piece of legislation for, uh, that relates to the energy sector and what is being done to help refineries all over the country? Well, I wish there was a lot more in here. We'd advocated to buy oil while it was cheap and put it in the strategic stockpile. Uh, you know, we, we could buy it at, at whatever it is now, 24-something a barrel. Um, we couldn't get that done. Uh, I think it would have made perfect business sense and economic sense for taxpayers. But what we did get done was turn off selling oil uh, that we bought at a high price for a very low price. So that provision did get in here. Uh, but that's about the only energy provision. Look, our, our oil patch needs some help through this crisis as well. Um, we could have done it and done it smartly for the taxpayers by investing in low price oil to go in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which, by the way, uh, Congress taps into every once in a while to sell off at higher prices to fund needed government programs. So we could add a, a real win here, but uh, the Democrats and, and uh, Senator Schumer were not up for that uh, without shoving in all their, their Green New Deal stuff. And so um, that one fell on the cutting room floor, unfortunately. And so just to follow up on this and, 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 and to press you on this, there's a lot of talk about in 60 days from now, Congressman Walden, that there might be another round of stimulus. What are the parameters of the next round of stimulus and what do you hope to see included in those talks? Well, I think first we need to see how this plays out. And so let's see what where we are 30 days from now. Certainly, uh, we also have the, the overall funding of the government for this fiscal year to get done as well. I think we have to look at supply chain vulnerability. This is something that, that I've harped on. I know my, my friend across the aisle, Anna Eshoo, has, has championed this effort as well. Um, we, we now have it on full display, the vulnerability in our supply chain for critical medicines and equipment. Um, I, I'd like to see us uh, have have more outreach on broadband so that our rural communities can actually take advantage of the important telehealth provisions we put in here. But I'm so telehealth glad, and uh, Congressman, I'm so glad you you brought the conversation there because in just the in just the past several day or so you've pushed broad wireless broadband providers to make maximum amount of data available to right. folks. What can wireless broadband providers what do they have to do over the next week or so while the men, while 80 million Americans are in shelter in place? Yeah, so I, some of them have done this. I know AT&T has, and I think other companies are as well, lifting their data caps, um, allowing you to use your, your Wi-Fi hotspot at home, if you will, unlimited. Um, they're, they're waiving fines and fees and penalties. They're, they're, you know, the, the ISPs and the, and the carriers are coming together to do really positive things and work with the FCC. Chairman Pai has been terrific with his Keep America Connected plan. There's a lot of great volunteerism going on out there and they can do it. But here's, here's the thing to understand. If everybody uh, just has unlimited Wi-Fi caps um, or no caps at all, you're going to overload the existing uh, wireless system. Uh, so, you know, we have to be careful what what works in an emergency won't work long term. And so we have to be thoughtful about this. But in the short term, they're able to do it. And beyond that, though, we need to get Huawei and, and other equipment out of our networks. We passed a bill the president signed, I believe, this week on data uh, security and data mapping. We need to know where the country is not served with high-speed broadband. Look, in my state of Oregon, you can learn online. It just doesn't count because our schools aren't set up to make sure every child gets access to uh, online yeah. education materials and support. Right. So 
we're exposing these big gaps. Many of, new, many of us have known they've been there for a long time, but we are making more yep. telehealth progress, and that's important. All right, Congressman Greg Walden, a Republican from Oregon, thanks for making time for us. I know you've been busy, especially as it relates to the broadband uh, issues and on the energy front as well.